Hi guys, hope you guys are all doing well. Happy Saturday. I wanted to share a story with you guys because there's some important lessons in there for those of you that might be newer on the platform. So I'm in a situation right now with one of my cars, actually my Jeep, and the rental ended at midnight, technically, this morning, right? I spoke with the renter last night at about 11 o'clock, and she let me know that it was going to be pretty difficult for her to get it over to me by midnight. So she asked if it would be okay to extend her trip to 10 a.m. this morning, um, which I said was totally fine. She maintained really good communication, didn't have any issues. She said when she went to try and go extend her trip she continued to get a failed um, attempt notice on Turo so who knows it could could have been a credit card issue maybe a red flag on her account I have no idea I then proceeded her to direct her to go ahead call Turo find out what's going on and see if they can help you extend the trip since we still had an hour or so before the trip ended she got back to me and let me know that um, she wasn't able to get the trip extended. She never really said why, but that she would in fact return the car at 10 a.m. And it was all documented. I let her know that, okay, in that case, you know, it's gonna be considered a late return and you will be charged for the additional usage. And she said she was totally fine with paying whatever fees might be included. And she was actually leaving town. So she was an out of town visitor and she left today. Um, so 10 a.m. came around, no car. Noon came around, no car, so I continued to kind of message her, follow up with her, and she let me know that her brother, I believe, had the vehicle and would be returning it because she had already departed to go back home since her flight left early that morning. The good thing in this situation is that she's had good communication. Bad thing is that she is no longer in possession of the car. Someone else has it, and the car still hasn't been returned. Okay, so the lessons that are really key in instances like this. Number one, as soon as you know that a car is going to be late and that it's not, Turo gives you a 30 minute grace period or gives a renter a 30 minute grace period. And as soon as that 30 minute grace period hits or you know for certain that the car is going to be late, like in this case where she messaged me and she told me that, you wanna report it right away. So actually last night before I went to bed, I reported the late return to Turo. That way it's documented on their end. The reason why you wanna make sure you do that is for a few things. One, because of the insurance coverage, because technically once a trip ends, you no longer have coverage. So let's say the trip ends, you never reported the late return, and that person gets into an accident. That could definitely void your coverage. So you wanna report that so that as a host, you are protected in the case that something goes wrong and something happens. And then second, you wanna report the late return because you wanna be able to message the guest let them know because this is a late return you are going to be charged the additional usage fees and late return fees if you don't state that through messaging you cannot collect for the additional time that they had that car and you want to make sure that you get that money because you rightfully should right um, so those are the few reasons why you want to make sure you do that and that you do that in a very timely fashion you can't wait to get the car back and everything is said and done and then decide to go and report the late return and try to collect on those fees. It doesn't work like that. So make sure you follow that system because that system is really in favor of the host. Not only that, but as soon as you report that late return, then you really get the support of Turo. Turo's trust and safety team will kind of make a constant effort to reach out to your guests. They'll message them, text them, call them, email them to try and retrieve your vehicle. And then once you have that late return process started, the renter can no longer book another car or try to extend your car. So it kind of puts some restrictions into place that helps protect you as a host, which is good. So basically what's going on now is that it's about 6 p.m. Saturday evening. She last I heard from her said that the car would be back by 5 p.m. It's 6, car is still not back. So my next point being that if you do not have GPS trackers on your car, literally don't do Turo. Don't even waste your time. It's not worth a headache. Just don't do your do, don't do that to yourself. It's not worth the stress of not knowing where your cars are. So of course, luckily my cars have GPS trackers, so I'm just not worried about it. When instances like this happen, it's not something that stresses me out. 
One is probably because I've been through it so many times, and second is because the system is set in place, right? I reported the late return, I've kept in communication with my guests. There's really nothing more than that that I can do. I know that my car is equipped with a GPS tracker. If it goes beyond that 24 hour time frame after the reservation, it immediately gets escalated to the higher level of trust and safety, where they will then begin to, they'll sign an investigator and they'll try to go and retrieve your car and repossess it. So if that's what's going to happen then that's what's going to happen like for example tonight i have dinner plans this is not disrupting my dinner plans in any ways i'm going to continue on with my day as it is and do what i have to do and i'll just continue to message the guests and try to see if i can get the car back before it has to get escalated to this whole other level if the car comes back great if not then i'm going to let Turo handle it from there so that's why you really want to make sure if you are on a platform like Turo that you really familiarize yourself with sort of the ins and outs of how things are done. That way, when situations like this happen, you don't have to worry about it. It's not something to be stressed out about. Literally, things like this happen in any type of business and in their different forms, right? So if you have a system set in place, you know that you have trackers on your car, you've done everything you can do, then there's really not much else to worry about. You kind of just have to let the time play out, let Turo do its thing, and eventually, hopefully, you'll retrieve your car and you'll go from there. And oftentimes, I've seen in the comment section where people say, oh, like Turo's a marketplace with a bunch of shooters and a bunch of crappy cars, and of course, you're gonna get renters that do things like this because you know it's just a bunch of cheap, crappy cars. That is actually so far from the truth. Um, oftentimes, you know, when situations like this happen, it's not from people who are paying low day rates or, you know, who are just like kind of scraping by and are just trying to get a car on tour because it's cheap. Like for example, this trip in particular, this renter paid $120 per day. They rented the car for nine days. The total came out to $1,080. And that was just for the nine days at the day rate. That's not even including any insurance protection they may have purchased. The Turo trip fee that gets added on top of that. So we can kind of make the assumption that it's gonna be just a little bit under double that amount. So they probably, if I had to guess, just take a guess in the dark. My guess is that they paid somewhere around $1,700 for this trip, which is quite a bit for renting a car for nine days, right? And not only that, but they rented the car, I think it was for five days at first, and then they extended it to nine. So this is somebody who obviously has money, didn't have an issue paying a high day rate. So, you know, you just kind of never know when these things will happen, but just know that over time, the probability of something like this happening it will happen the longer that you're on the platform, the more trips that you have under your belt. And if you're well equipped for it, if you're prepared for it, it's really not an issue. It's not something to stress out about. You just follow the system, let things happen, do your part, do your due diligence to make your life easier and things will work out in the end. They always have. I've been doing this for five, five and a half years now, and they've always worked out. So. I don't know what's gonna happen with this trip. I really have no idea. Um, hopefully they come to their senses and just return the car. If not, then it'll get escalated at midnight to an investigator and then tomorrow, if need be, we'll have to repossess the vehicle. So we just go with it. Until then, I'm gonna go out, enjoy my Saturday night and have dinner and you know carry on with my life as it is. So I just want to share the story with you guys so that you can really get those takeaways of what stuff you have to have in place. Um, if you're looking for a tracker, I use TrackMade GPS. There's so many out there on the market. Any of my other host friends out there, if you have a suggestion, please comment below so other people can see what trackers are used in the community. And what's so funny about this is that one of the subscribers on the channel just a couple of days ago DM me on Instagram with a photo of the Jeep that he spotted in Los Angeles with this renter. So, um, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of funny to have sort of that secondary GPS tracking. So if anyone sees a black lifted Jeep two door, uh, it's the JL soft top. Let me know. That's going to be the person that has my car. All right, you guys have a great rest of your weekend. I will talk to you guys later. Take care. Bye.